War of the Worlds. See these worlds? They're mad at each other. It's a, it's a representation of the conflict in the, the, the book. Now, there is no book review I get more nervous for doing here on the channel than reviewing a piece of classic literature. And War of the Worlds, by all means, is absolutely one of the staple classic pieces of discussion for the science fiction genre. Now, despite what some people may claim in very poorly researched articles online, no, War of the Worlds is not the first sci-fi book ever written. I don't really believe in pointing to one work for starting a genre because they usually are accumulation of a lot of small steps of evolution, and then there's one piece that really solidifies it, not invents it. But if you're going to do that, then I would say you'd probably want to point at Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Give Mary Shelley the credit she deserves. She's a genius. But what War of the Worlds absolutely did do was solidify the invasion genre within science fiction and solidify its tropes so firmly we see so many angles of this story still in popular works published within that genre well over a hundred years later. And World of the Worlds is a fascinating piece to talk about for so many more reasons than besides just that. I think this is a story that has aged remarkably well and poorly. There is so much to pull apart here and examine, but let's get into the basic setup in case you somehow do not know the story of War war of the world taking place in the area around and near London. I'm not great at UK geography. There are a lot of places mentioned, but I assume all of them are right around there. World of the Worlds is a first-person POV account of an invasion from Mars basically coming here to exterminate human life. I think maybe the laziest criticism I have ever seen of a book was in a review of World of the Worlds and in that base premise where they were saying it's not a good book now because we know there isn't giant civilizations on Mars. That's not the point. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Like, yeah, we also know Middle Earth didn't exist. Cool. And what I found to be really special here upon rereading this for the first time since I think either middle or high school is how well that narrator's voice comes off the page, at least for the first half of the book. Something happens around maybe a bit after the halfway point that begins to derail the prose as a whole for me, and it's just kind of getting tired of a certain stylization choice. But before I get into that criticism, the way this is written feels decades ahead of its time, and I think is part of the reason why this made such an impact upon release and has stayed relevant for so long. There's narrative choices to one, keep that first person POV anonymous. You don't get a name. So I think you're supposed to fill it in with yourself as much as possible. It feels like a deliberate choice to me. And the way that humanity reacts to the events of this book and how our narrator is describing it provides so much personality beyond just a typical invasion story. And I find that's what a lot of the worst invasion stories we see in pop culture lack personality. They just get bogged down in the existential dread of an invasion, but they forget to pump in that flawed humanity that makes science fiction stories really engaging. And War of the Worlds is chock full of it. I've actually seen, maybe I'm in the minority here, quite a few people saying that they were disappointed by the lack of character from the narrator of War of the Worlds. I completely disagree. I just find H.G. Wells to have made a choice not to be very overt in terms of having the narrator explain their own personality, but you pick up on so much of it through how they are describing the horrific or even sometimes kind of funny events happening during this invasion. And there is a surprising amount of comedy within War of the Worlds, I think all of it deliberate, and I found myself actually laughing at various imaginings of how people would respond to an alien invasion. And after living through an existential threat to humanity in recent years, a lot of it rang extremely true. But getting into that weaker side to the writing, it's the prose. I find H.G. Wells to be a lot better as a writer than many of the popular sci-fi writers that came in the decades after him, but the length of sentences here and the structure of them wow, became a problem, especially after, yeah, that halfway point. And I think that is supposed to be communicating the disjointed mental state of the character we're following, but there is a certain level where an interesting stylization choice begins to just have diminishing returns. And yeah, that was a problem with this choice because we're hitting, it felt like a hundred word sentences. And I was just like, why? This is so, like my short-term memory is fucking full. 
<laughs> it's not that bad though. It does prevent this from being one of my favorites ever, especially in terms of how it's written, but it does lend itself to one of the angles of this story that I really loved, and that's how human it still feels today. Because our main character and the other POV we follow for a bit have this immensely human magnetism to them in how they're experiencing this and the people's response to them as well. And the narrative is chock full of these moments that go against the established tone, but don't pull you out of it because of how well folded into just living the human experience they are. I've said human enough now. And as we get further and further in the story, our main character begins to have very drastic responses to all the trauma he's been through. And the turn the overall quality of War of the Worlds takes once that choice is made is tough because I love the idea of having the narrator kind of break down and not process what they're going through very well. I just felt the execution of it was kind of weak. I think for its time, it's probably phenomenal, but I would really enjoy without, of course, erasing the original, seeing a more modern author known for their great writing, let's just pick a popular pick and say Neil Gaiman, take their own stab at essentially just punching up the prose to be a bit more up to date with what is considered great writing now. And I don't think that'd be doing a disservice service to World of the Worlds because this is already a story that is probably most known for an adaptation Orson Welles' radio drama, which is a whole story for another video, but I love the history of that. In terms of its themes, uh, World of the Worlds is a victim of the time period it's in a bit because there is a clear attempt by H.G. Wells to have a critique of humanity's colonization of other peoples and things like that. And I think those themes are delivered on, especially in the mental toll being the victim of that type of thing would inflict on a person. But there's terminology within, especially like the opening chapter of this book, that's going to make you be like, oh, ah, that's a racism, <laughs> which the book is written in the time it's written in. So obviously, yeah, there's going to be outdated terminology that would be considered offensive today. Just be prepared to encounter that when you open the book. And while it's critiquing imperialism, it refers to people as inferior races. So... I do think it is absolutely worth note as well to make it clear that while there is some terminology here that on first impression is going to be shocking to a modern reader, it plays into the wider themes of War of the Worlds, which surprising, I didn't pick up on this the first time I read it when I was a kid, but I definitely do now as an adult, is just a giant condemnation of imperialism and the moral failings that one has to buy into to inflict such incredible harms on another. There's a reason it is mentioning to Tasmania, and then placing the invasion from the Martians in London, the heart of imperialism of the time itself. That is all a very deliberate thing to then say, what we did there is awful, and it could happen to us from the greater technology from an alien invader. That makes sense. So yes, on face value, it's going to be like, bah. but then you have to remember the book is saying, that's bad. For me, I am quite comfortable labeling War of the Worlds a flawed masterpiece. Just a couple changes could be made that would, for my own personal taste, make this a genuine masterpiece. As it is, I'd be lying if I said it was my favorite book ever and I think all the praise it gets is absolutely warranted. But extending an olive branch to the War of the World mega fans, I get why this is ranked so high in the history of published sci-fi. It is immensely immersive. I think there are narrative choices that are flat out brilliant and its representation of the response to an event like this is, it turns out, kind of accurate. And the fear that is able to be communicated in some of the darker or more violent scenes happening holds up and is still felt to this day among some of the best I've read. Starts off as a smashing success and descends into just being really good. And it is probably my favorite invasion story I have read in science fiction because it's not my favorite genre and I really do appreciate what War of the Worlds did and how well it's held up. I just said that. Someone's gonna comment an invasion story that is a masterpiece that I've forgotten about, and I'll regret saying that it's my favorite of that subgenre. But hey, algorithm, drive it up. Tell me where I'm wrong. <laughs> and one last side note I'm remembering to put in here. A lot of people are not as big a fan as lengthy descriptions as I am. War of the Worlds has exactly the amount of lengthy descriptions that I like, which means a lot of you will find it probably far too much. And that's fine.
but I want to include that in here. I like it, especially how it's presented, but I think a lot of you are going to uh, get tired of hearing about Martian organs. <laughs> but this has just been my thoughts on H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. I'll have a link to buy the book in the description down below if you'd like to purchase it for yourself, and have a good one, y'all. Peace.